Hello beautiful people, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with the shiny new Oppo F9 Rock and of course the very funky water drop display design which has been much talked about on the internet. And we're going to do a quick side by side with the Huawei P20 Lite and the Honor 10, two other great value handsets harken from the old Asia. Uh, just to see which one might be best for you in terms of speed, performance, battery life, all that sort of shenanigans. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more on the Oppo F9 and the latest and greatest mobile tech. So first up, in terms of the general design, the Oppo F9 is a bit of a beast in comparison with the Huawei and the Honor. The Huawei and the Honor are both 5.84 inch uh, smartphones, so almost a 6 incher, but not quite. Whereas the Oppo F9 tips the skills, it's a 6.3 incher, so definitely a bit of a beast. Um, certainly in terms of just general one-handed use, bit of a struggle, but thankfully you do get a bit of one-handed mode action, so we can just tap that in, in the notifications tab, and as you can see, it's that little bit easier to use then. Uh, you can open up all your apps and do everything you usually do, and then uh, just tap this when you're done, and we expand back to full screen view. You do, of course, get the same option here on the Huawei and the Honor as well, so you'll have no trouble at all with handling any of these handsets. And of course, the, uh, the Huawei and the Honor, because they're a little bit more compact, they are a little bit easier to play with with one mate anyway. As for the rest of the design, well, they're all nicely curvy. They're all quite comfortable to clutch. And if we flip around to the back, you'll see that they're all shiny smartphones as well. Our favorite overall in terms of the design is probably the Honor 10. It's got this very funky striation effect, which uh, sort of comes into play as you tilt it towards the light. The colors change from this lovely deep blue hue to a sort of a funky purple, and it looks very, very sexy indeed. We really like the design of the Oppo F9 as well, however, it goes from a sort of a darker hue down to a lighter shade down at the bottom, which you can hopefully make out as the light catches it. You'll also notice a very subtle uh, diamond pattern as well, which looks very funky indeed. Get a little bit closer, hopefully you'll be able to make it out, and it just helps the Oppo, Oppo F9 to stand out a little bit from the rest of the glossy smartphone crowd. Unfortunately, the Huawei P20 is a little bit dull in comparison, certainly compared with the Oppo and the Honor, and with the rest of the P20 series as well. It's just your bog standard, straightforward, single hue, uh, no funky light effects or anything like that. And of course, because all three of these phones are glossy, they do tend to smear up a storm as well, so you want to give them a good buffing every now and then, especially if you're eating anything greasy like chips. Both the Oppo F9 and the Huawei P20 Lite sport a rear-mounted fingerprint sensor, which you can hopefully make out there. It's a little bit easier to make out on the P20 Lite because it's actually fully indented into the surface, whereas in the Oppo, it's actually fairly level with the surface, only ever so slightly can you make it out. That said, I haven't really struggled to find it because it is conveniently located, at least your finger does sort of naturally fall to it. In the case of the Honor 10, the fingerprint sensor is actually housed beneath the display here. You can barely even make it out. It's actually built into the glass, and that's quite good if you've got, for instance, slightly wet, damp hands. Uh, it makes it a much easier for the phone to actually detect your fingerprint, uh, which is definitely a great feature. And in terms of responsiveness, all of them are fast and accurate. As you can see there, you're straight into the Honor with the Oppo. Uh, again, if we just switch it off and just give this a quick tap now, straight into the desktop. So I've had no problem again with responsiveness or anything like that. And the Huawei P20 Lite, exactly the same tap now, straight into your desktop. So nice and responsive. And all three of these phones also offer an alternative to the fingerprint sensor as well, which we will cover in a minute. And last of all, it's probably worth pointing out that none of these phones are water resistant either, so don't go dropping them in the toilet, kiddies, whatever you do. So what about the display tech? Well, it's a 5.84 inch display, as I mentioned before, on the Huawei and the Honor. Uh, in both cases, it's a really nice, sharp panel as well. You get full HD plus resolution visuals, so that just keeps all your images nice and crisp and clear. They all sport a stretched aspect ratio as well, of course. I think it's around 18.5 by 9 for the Huawei. It's 19 by 9 for the Honor. And it's 19.5 by 9, I believe, for the Oppo. So many specs going around my head. And of course, yes, all three of these phones do indeed sport a notch up top. Though, as you will see, in the case of the Oppo, is that water drop notch. So it's a bit more subtle. It uh, doesn't intrude quite so much into the screen. In the case of the Oppo, you'll notice that the notch does intrude a little bit in some of the apps that you use, for instance, in the photo gallery here. Uh, but as you can see here, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You still get a pretty full screen view. Despite that, in the case of the Honor and the Huawei, most of the apps tend to just hide that notch anyway, uh, so it won't even be an issue. Now, unfortunately, the Huawei P20 Lite and the Oppo don't offer a way of hiding that notch in everyday use if uh, you really, really do not like it. Only the Honor offers the uh, the option of actually hiding it away. So just, uh, as you can see here, if we just hit hide notch... It just covers it basically with a black bar so you can't even notice it. Uh, this feature should be coming to the P20 Lite. Uh, any day now. It apparently is already available in some regions, but here in the UK, there's no hide notch option available, and it's fully I've fully updated it. 
Please don't tell me yes there is a high notch option because believe me, there really, really isn't. See, no high notch option. But moving on from the notch, all three of these phones offer really, really nice color reproduction, uh, really nice sharp images. The uh, the display tech is fantastic. So no matter which your choice, you'll be really, really happy uh, watching a bit of Netflix, browsing through your photos, anything like that. So what is actually running the show in these three phones? Well, in the case of the Huawei P20 Lite, you get a current 659 chipset backed by four gigs of RAM. In the case of the Oppo F9, it's a Helio P60 from MediaTek. And in this case, it's backed by six gigs of RAM, although you should be able to pick it up in a four gig variant as well. And the other 10 is running Kirin's 970 chipset. So a bit of a step up from the more basic Kirin 659 found in the P20 Lite. And in that case, you also get four gigs of RAM. If you're a benchmarking fan, we've run the likes of Antutu on these three handsets, and unsurprisingly, the Honor 10 is top of the class with its Kirin 970 chipset. As you can see there, a score significantly higher than the likes of the Oppo and of course the Huawei P20 Lite with its lesser Kirin chipset stuffed in there. And the same results basically from Geekbench as well. Honor 10 in the lead, Oppo stuffed neatly in the middle of this smartphone sandwich, and then the Huawei P20 Lite with the, uh, the 937 single core score in particular. Uh, about half the performance you could expect from the Honor 10. What that means is basically, I mean, the Honor 10, you will expect a nice silky smooth everyday experience from this thing. Uh, apps load up straight away as soon as you tap them. And you have no problem playing the likes of PUBG Mobile either with a nice smooth frame rate, even on a pretty high detail level. And that's helped along in particular by the new GPU Turbo update, which has uh, really boosted the game and performance of the Honor 10. Go check out my full video on that for all you need to know. That said, the likes of the Oppo and the Huawei P20 Lite will still run the likes of PUBG M, albeit on slightly lower detail levels, and maybe not with quite so consistent a frame rate. You will see the odd stutter in everyday life as well, but for the whole, they do hold up pretty nicely. I mean, for everyday stuff like browsing the web, message and things like that, they definitely do the job. But what about the software that's running on them? Well, all three of these phones rock a bit of Android Oreo, but they also have a heavy overlay stuffed on top as well. In the case of the Huawei and the Honor, uh, both of these phones have Huawei's own Motion UI 8 software stuffed on top of Android. And in the case of the Oppo, it's the Color OS. And while they basically have the same sort of look and feel, these overlays add in a whole host of bonus features. So for instance, the notifications panel has been completely overhauled, particularly in the case of the Oppo, you've got all kinds of bonus features in there, such as the ability to, uh, to uh, activate that one-handed mode, things like that. Uh, and even clever little stuff like starting a screen recording whenever you want. Of course, it's fully customizable, as you would expect. Uh, and it's exactly the same in the case of the Huawei and the Honor as well. You can get that set up exactly like you like, how you like. Customization is definitely key for all three of these phones. So if, it's, if you dive into the settings menu, go into the display section, you'll find that there's all kinds of customization in there. You can actually change the color temperature of these devices by going into like some color modes. You've got eye comfort mode, or in this case, night shield, which basically just helps to uh, create nice warmer temperatures when it's a low light situation. It just makes it a bit more of a comfortable viewing experience. You've also got whole heaps of gesture control on there as well. You can also completely remove the uh, navigation bar if you saw like and use for instance the likes of the navigation dock or fingerprint sensor swiping on the Honor 10. The Oppo actually adds in a whole bunch of extra stuff which you won't get on these other smartphones as well such as for instance the quiet time which automatically sets it to do not disturb as in the likes of kids space so you can just use that to uh, when you're handing your phone to junior so they don't accidentally go online and buy six thousand pounds worth of crap from Amazon anything like that. Private safe just keeps your stuff encrypted which is definitely a bonus. Build the clone apps, the game space, all kinds kinds of stuff in there. We're doing a full tips and tricks over on Recombu stuff. So stay tuned for that if you want to know more about some of those in-depth features. However, one of the more exciting and interesting features added by both of these overlays is the facial recognition. What this allows you to do is basically bypass the fingerprint security entirely, just using the front-facing camera to uh, basically recognize your gorgeous mug and uses that to unlock the phone instead. Definitely handy if you're wearing gloves or for whatever reason your hands are out of commission. In the case of all three phones, I found this works really, really well as well. The, uh, the Motion UI effort is definitely very, very prompt and so is the Color S one. So let's just give it a quick test now with the Huawei P20 Lite and the Oppo. So let's just switch both phones off and then just a quick tap of the power button. And as you can see, you are straight into your desktops. The Oppo one is actually incredibly fast. It's almost as fast as the likes of the OnePlus uh, effort, which we uh, tested and uh, on the Huawei P20 Pro as well. As you can see, you basically tap that power button you're pretty much straight into your desktop, so you're not even seeing the lock screen there. The P20 Lite is a little bit slower. In the case of the Honor 10, it's nice and swift as well. Let's give that a quick tap now. Recognize and face, there we go. And just have a look, there you go. More often than not, you are straight into it. 
uh, Norway's. So uh, yeah, it's definitely very, very impressive. And in all three cases, it works quite well in low light as well. As for storage, you get 64 gigs in both the Huawei P20 Lite and the Oppo, but the Honor 10, once again, top of the class here with 128 gigs of storage on board. Or oh, wait, is it top of the class? Because actually the Honor 10 is the only one that doesn't support micro SD memory cards. So uh, you can expand the storage on the Oppo and the Huawei P20 to uh, a good sizable amount. Unfortunately, that option is not available on the Honor. As for the battery life, there's not a huge amount between these three phones, to be perfectly honest. The Huawei P20 Lite has the smallest battery at 3000 milliamps, whereas compared to the, the Oppo, it's a 3500, and the Honor 10, I believe it's a 3400 milliamp. But all three will basically keep you going for the length of a day, even if you're quite busy, you're doing a lot of stuff on your smartphone throughout the course of the day, even using the camera quite a bit. It's only the likes of Skype and, and gaming and things like that that will really drain them fast. You get a nice bit of supercharged support on the Honor and you get a nice bit of the VOOC quick charge support here on the Oppo. It's actually slightly faster we found on the Oppo. It's impressive, uh, impressively quick. You get probably a good couple hours of use from just like five minutes at the plug. And the good thing is that all three phones remain nice and cool while you're charging them as well. And as you can see here, of course, you've got the usual power saving modes and all that kind of shenanigans. So you can see exactly what's draining your battery and uh, switch on that power saving mode if you're struggling a bit. The only thing that we don't like on the Oppo is the fact that it uses old school micro USB. It is not the Type C reversible. Boo! Whereas you do get a bit Type C action on the Honor and the Huawei. Lovely stuff. Oh, and before I forget, yes, all three of these do also have a headphone jack, so you can plug in headphones when needed. Now, all three of these smartphones do, of course, sport a dual lens rear snapper because, of course, they do. What phone doesn't have a dual lens snapper these days, pretty much? In the case of the Huawei P20 Lite, it's a 16 megapixel primary lens, f2.2, backed by a 2 megapixel depth sensor. It's a similar setup to the Oppo. It's again a 16 megapixel primary lens, uh, this time with an f1.85 aperture, and that's again backed by a 2 megapixel depth sensor. And what that allows you to do is just get a nice depth of field for your portrait shots, things like that. In the case of the Honor 10, it's slightly more advanced. You do get a 16 megapixel primary lens, that's an RGB lens, and that is backed by a 24 megapixel monochrome lens, and they work in conjunction for all of your snaps. And those are f1.8 apertures as well, so again, a little bit better for those low light situations than the likes of the Huawei P20 Lite. You will find more detailed shots and everything are possible with the Honor 10. If we dive on into the camera apps, you'll see that they're quite feature-packed experiences in all three cases. So for instance, you get lots of little toggles like uh, a good bit of portrait mode action in all three cases. So you can just get a nice crisp shot of your subject while blurring the background. You also get Huawei's move and picture feature here on the Huawei and the Honor smartphone that just captures a little brief snippet of video with every shot that you take just to bring your gallery to life. And the Honor 10 also boasts Huawei's AI smarts because it is that 970 chipset. So I can just detect what kind of scene you're trying to shoot and then it basically just boosts the vibrancy of everything to make it look really, really lush and to really jump off the screen at you. Some people hate it, some people love it. It's all on your personal tastes. And of course, you get a whole heap of bonus modes as well. Manual controls on all three of these phones. So I believe it's over here on the Oppo. It's called Expert. And that just allows you to basically tweak the likes of the ISO levels, the white balance, all that kind of thing. It's called Pro Photo here on the Huawei and the Honor. In that case, again, just a very similar thing with, uh, of course, a nice bit of uh, line. Wow, what's this thing called again? My brain has melted. The levelly plane thing anyway, whatever that's called. Answers in the comments below, please. Stickers, of course, you can add all kinds of fun stickers and things to your face to make you look like a weird perverted cartoon character, so that's joyous. I mean, honestly, what, what, why, who, what? <laughs> what is this carrot doing to me? And then, of course, you can dive into the video modes as well. And as you can see, in the case of the Oppo and the Huawei P20 Lite, it tops off at full HD resolution 1080p at 30 frames per second. However, the Honor 10 goes a step beyond. As you can see, you can shoot full HD uh, at either 30 or 60 frames per second. You can also shoot full HD plus to suit the stretched aspect ratio of the smartphone screen. And you can even bump it all the way up to 4K Ultra HD. And of course, you get usual slow-mo and time-lapse in all three cases as well. Now if we swap on around to that front facing camera in all three cases, you get a nice sharp selfie snapper. Clearly, uh, these phones are designed for people who do a lot of Instagramming. So you get a 16 megapixel effort here on the Huawei P20 Lite, 25 megapixel effort on the Oppo, and a 24 megapixel on the Honor. And in all three cases, it's f2.0. And in all three cases, you get a form of sort of screen flash uh, that can really help to illuminate your mug in those darker conditions. And you can even do the moving pictures jobby as well 
in the case of the Honor and the Huawei. So that in a nutshell is how these three phones stack up. They're definitely very solid, very feature packed mid-range smartphones. Which one would you prefer? Definitely let us know in the comments below which way you would sway. Definitely always interesting to hear your thoughts. Uh, stay tuned for my full Oppo F9 review over on Recombu, uh, so stay tuned for that. And I'll be doing full camera review, camera comparisons and everything with this bad boy as well. And as ever, hit subscribe if you want to see more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone, love you, bye.